Welcome to IFF Dispatch. For 97 years now, the IFF has never stopped working to serve the men and women who keep our two countries safe. In this episode, you'll learn not only how we determine who to support in elections, but why we must maintain a political presence in the first place. You'll also see the programs we are developing to better address post-traumatic stress among our members and the state-of-the-art technology we're using to track how natural disasters affect our members so we can provide real-time direct assistance. Plus, we'll tell you how your union is adapting to new communications technology to deliver information the way you want to receive it. In our first segment, Kevin O'Connor, the head of our governmental affairs and public policy operation, explains the process your union undertakes to determine which politicians we endorse in the elections to ensure that our members and the public safety's interests are protected. The stakes could not be higher for the upcoming 2016 election. We have a presidential election that resembles a battle royale with dozens of candidates. The entire House of Representatives is up for election. In the Senate, one third of the seats are up with several pivotal races determining which party will be in control and those races are on top of the state and local elections you face at home. In all races, the IAFF follows its long-established principle of supporting our friends regardless of party. However, the real battle will be for the White House and electing the 45th President of the United States. That's why this union has been vetting the records, rhetoric, and firefighter and paramedic related policies of all the candidates to determine who if anyone, will earn our endorsement and support. Which politician stood with us when it counted on retirement security and bargaining rights? Which politicians sat on their hands during battles for funding SAFER and FIRE Act grants or supporting our educational, safety, and grant programs? Which candidates broke their promises on health care and social security issues? And which lawmakers attacked their federal firefighters or try to strip our rights and benefits at the state level. These are what we call our basket of issues. We want you to know that our endorsement is provided to ensure that you know who stands with your union on issues that affect your job, your livelihood, your health and safety at work, and your right to a secure retirement. That's it. Those are the issues you pay us to focus upon. At the end of the day, it's important for you to understand that your IAFF respects and celebrates your right to make your own decision when casting your ballot. If other issues are more important to you, that's your personal choice. But for this union, we don't care if a candidate is a right-wing conservative or an unapologetic liberal. If they support our issues, we will consider supporting them. It's pretty simple. That's how we determine who our union supports with our gold and black brand. And with a big political year coming up in 2016, we'll see you on the campaign trail. Post-traumatic stress is a term most often related to our military veterans. But as we are finding more and more every day, the incredible traumatic work our members do can sometimes take a terrible toll on their health as well. Here to tell us more about what the IAFF is doing to support our members experiencing post-traumatic stress is Pat Morrison, who heads our Division of Health, Safety, and Medicine. Firefighters and paramedics respond to any number of traumatic events every day. Just one incident can be enough to trigger symptoms of post-traumatic stress. But more often than not, symptoms begin to show as a result of the accumulative effect of the incredible emotional and physical work our members do. Symptoms can include repeated recollections or dreams about a stressful event, intense feelings of grief when reminded of the trauma, and difficulty functioning and performing day-to-day -day tasks. If this sounds familiar, you are not alone. Post-traumatic stress affects firefighters and paramedics at double the rate of the general population. We have two programs that are coming out from the IFF. We're looking at uh, what sort of things contribute to stress. We know that treatment is critical and can make a life or death difference. According to a number of studies, people with post-traumatic stress are six times more likely to commit suicide. 
While some fire departments have programs that do a good job of addressing behavioral health, most do not. That doesn't know any borders. We have to identify it early. The IFF is filling that void by developing resources and tools designed to help affiliates and members recognize the signs and symptoms of post-traumatic stress and provide ways to ensure that members in need get assistance. If you or someone you know has symptoms, help is available. In addition, this fall we'll be rolling out an online behavioral health awareness module available to all members and we will launch a beta test of a behavioral health peer training program to help affiliates form peer support assistant programs and develop their own best practices and guidelines to take action when signs of post-traumatic stress or other behavioral health issues emerge. We're also very active in working with state and provincial leaders to push for the passage of presumption laws. These laws ensure firefighters and paramedics are covered as a job-related illness under workers' compensation if they develop post-traumatic stress. To date, just a few states and provinces have passed legislation. If you are experiencing signs and symptoms, or know someone who may be suffering from post-traumatic stress, it is important to seek help. Contact the IAFF Health and Safety Division at the number on the screen, or visit our website for additional information. When a tornado destroys a neighborhood, or a hurricane causes flooding and wind damage, our members remain on the front lines, even if they may be suffering a personal loss at home. It's this union's job to respond to our members when disaster strikes. So let's hear from our Director of Occupational Health and Safety, Jim Brinkley. When a member has suffered a catastrophic loss, our Disaster Relief Fund provides immediate financial assistance to help them and their families. In some incidents, if there are multiple members or locals that suffer extensive damage, the IFF will set up a Disaster Relief Operations Center, at times even sending in an IFF team to coordinate immediate needs like groceries, medications, clothing, and shelter. This can be immediately helpful when ATMs won't work and insurance companies are slow to process claims. And we also use our state-of-the-art geographic information system, or GIS, to help in disasters. Our GIS analyses usually help our affiliates ensure that fire department resources are deployed to match the hazards and risks in their community. But we also use GIS to track storms in real time, hurricanes, as well as other disasters like tornadoes, floods, and wildfires that could potentially affect our members. Our major incident tracker protocol can determine exactly which affiliates are in harm's way. Based on that information, we quickly produce a list of potentially affected members along with their contact information, and then working with our district vice presidents and local presidents, we began reaching out to those members to determine their immediate needs. This was the case in the aftermath of some of the most recent large-scale disasters. Your union was there when Superstorm Sandy slammed into New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut. The IFF Disaster Relief Fund issued nearly $500,000 in financial relief checks and debit cards to IFF members. In 2013, we provided financial assistance for an operations center and direct assistance to 24 members after devastating floods in Calgary, Alberta. And our fund stands ready to assist after the next disaster. Members, if you are displaced from your home, Due to natural disaster or fire, call your district vice president or local president to apply for IFF Disaster Relief. Applications are available on the IFF Charitable Foundation website at www.iaffoundation.org. To help our fund remain strong and continue assisting all members in need, please donate to the IFF Charitable Foundation. How we communicate with each other is changing fast, and so are the ways this IFF is working to keep you informed. Jeff Zack, the head of our Media Communications and Information Systems, is here to tell you more. Over the years, technology has significantly changed the way we communicate. In fact, the line dividing communications and technology is pretty much gone. And the way our members want to receive news and information has also changed. The internet, 
the increased use of mobile devices, the popularity of social media as a main source of information, the 24-hour news cycle, the use of videos to tell stories, are all driving us to connect in new ways. Our job is to deliver messages to you immediately and on the go. We know our members still read our magazine, but they get IFF news and information on their phones and tablets too. So we now use several formats and platforms to deliver the news to you through our mobile-friendly website, our frontline app and social media, through email blasts for breaking news, and our blog. Whether it's a 140-character message on Twitter or an infographic on Facebook, a 30-second video or two-hour webcast, a 200-word email, a seven-second Vine, or a three-page magazine feature, the IAFF is working every day to provide the news and information and resources so you can do your jobs more safely. So download our app, join the conversation on social media, and visit our website. And if you have a suggestion for us, send an email to the address on the screen. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of IFF Dispatch. Please share this with your union brothers and sisters and your family members. You can also visit us online at iff.org slash dispatch for more video news. And while you're there, send us your story ideas for upcoming episodes. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time and stay safe.